far today, a couple of practice sessions, and the team have just updated you on who's where in the field and some of the dramas that have already unfolded. What we see in snapshot for today is a very fast day, a day where Jamie Wincup in the very first practice session has gone quicker than we've ever seen before in a practice session in a supercar here, and a day where red flags have been triggered and cars have been damaged. So they're backstories that will follow up, including the team and the guys that were the winners here in 2017. So they're going to shift their focus now towards later in the weekend. We have seen people recover in years gone by from difficult opening practice days. That car, however, car number 99 being driven by Anton Di Pasquale and Will Brown has been quick all day in both the sessions. Car number 99 strong in the hands of both those drivers and remembering last year qualified and raced very well up to a point they had a door flying open at a stage during the race and then ultimately hit the wall at the top of the hill at the end of the day. But um, as we discuss in this business, if you come away from this place and you've had a bad day result-wise, but you had speed, at least there's something to cling on to. But if you come away from the event with no speed and damage, then pretty long faces prevail. It's the first round of the Pertec Enduro Cup. Take note of those flags up in the background there, So, and also the cloud cover. There's a lot more of it than there was. Practice one was all but clear. Started at 11 degrees, finished at 13. Practice two, a little bit more scattered cloud around, got to about 17 degrees. Michael Crusoe on the right, who's a bit hoarse today. He's getting over a cold. Will Brown on the left and David Reynolds in civvies in the middle there, 2017 race winner. And then when we finished that session number two, there was a little bit more cloud again. Now the wind has swung, which typically brings weather here. So it's generally coming from something like a south to southwesterly direction. Virgin Australia presenting all the information around this gorgeous racetrack. 59th edition of the Super Cheap Auto Bathurst 1000, the great race. 6.2 kilometres around here, average speed just on 180 kilometres an hour. Brake stress here is low, but brake temps get high. Managing those brakes is a big deal. Tire wear is medium. There's not a lot of bumps around this racetrack, but when you do hit a kerb or two here and there, it excites the suspension in the car, and particularly when you get to places like the Dipper. So you run along pit straight into Hell Corner, turn number one, second gear, 110 kilometres an hour, blast up mountain straight, 255 plus. The right-hander through turn two, and then the ongoing climb to the cutting is a fantastic piece of racetrack. And really everything from the cutting all the way to Forest Elbow is grin from ear to ear stuff because the cars are at their grip limit. They're hovering around 200 odd kilometres an hour, just under, just over. And already today, we've seen a lot of people bitten by the concrete here, Mark Scaife. Jump in the driver's seat for us and give us the rest of the lap. <laughs> well, we love this circuit and over the rise there at Skyline, down the hill. Use that as a braking area for the dipper. And that drop off there, the cars are on two wheels. You've got to come off there nice and cleanly and not induce too much oversteer, too much wheel spin, down to Forest Elbow and then this famous run down our Conrod Strait, the 300 kilometre run into the fast right and then the slow left. Going to knock a bucket load of speed off the cars in that zone there. Back to second gear and the run down to the final corner at Murray's Corner. Very easy to make a mistake. We've already sent a couple of cars off the road there today. And those cars that the guys reported on before that had hit the wall at Reed Park have hit with real significance because when you lose track time around a place like this, it hurts you for the rest of the weekend. So those teams are working hard overnight to have those cars prepared and back out there. Good job by Brad Jones Racing to have McCauley's car finished. And on the scale and impact of damage, I think it's the impact on the driver that's often greater than the technical impact because that ends up being turned around and repaired. And there might be some compromise and you lose the thread of the way in which the track evolves and the way things are changing on this racetrack all the time. But then there's that thing, even if you try and brush it off when as a driver, you've just got to keep asking yourself, how did I do that? Why did that happen? What was wrong in the sequence that had that unfold? And this is what the subsequent consequences are when you do hit the wall up there. So that's inside the Erebus garage at Penrite Racing, at the angle grinder out and those tubes that Mark was describing before. The front rail, you told me, survived pretty well but some of the roll cage structure, you can see the kink in the bar running down off the turret area, down towards where the jacks are in the right front corner of the car, had a big whack. These concrete walls win in those battles up at the top of the hill. Mark Larkin was up there early in the day and gave us a passionate description of everything there is to see up there. Even McPhillamy, which looks like it's got a giant amount of runoff area, doesn't have when you make a mistake. We saw it in the Porsches there a few moments ago. So Jamie Wincup opened the account early in the day really impressively, Mark, on a track that was ideally positioned with no wind and low temperature. 
crunched out a two minute 4.6. We all got pretty excited about that. In the second session, it was James Moffat did a 5.6 and we were particularly interested in the difference, the delta between the primary and the co-drivers because you've got to have both firing to be effective on Sunday. And on average, we saw a margin of about four to five tenths of a second between the key runners that will be focused on through the weekend. Yeah, so that margin, and we were also excited by the speed and the closeness of the co-drivers. The top 12 of those co-drivers, in fact, it's better than that in the end. It was 12 to begin with. It ended up being 15 cars all within one second. So for the co-drivers, that's a, a story that's worth telling because through the course of the race and their number of stints with seven stops, eight stints, and for the co-drivers to be operating within about half a second of the lead driver and for them to be all so close, bodes well for a great race. Other guys that got off to a pretty strong start, but there were somewhat quiet achievers were 97 with Shane Van Gisbergen and Garth Tander. They only used one set of tyres in each session. No fresh tyre runs. And Garth made a little mistake on his lap. He was reasonably comfortable. The, they're comfortable because when they make changes to the car, it does the things that the textbook tells you they're going to do. That's always encouraging with any race car. New livery this weekend, 7-Eleven and Mobile on the Nick Percat Tim Blanchard car, and new livery with the car behind, the Rick Kelly Dale Wood car number 15 as well. So you've really got to have your wits about you this weekend, folks, as you try and track who your favourite drivers and cars are. Everybody puts on their special party frock when they come to Bathurst in terms of colours and sponsors. So we saw a couple of interesting things occur in those earlier sessions with people having trouble battling to stop down the bottom of the hill, which is standard procedure often. Uh, and we saw one or two laps that didn't fully culminate in, in the way in which they were going to play out. Alex Premer was one of those. So he got caught uh, by one of the red flags and uh, he was on target for a very strong lap. These guys were good too. Tony Delberto and Fabian Coulthard on the podium a couple of years ago here. So car number 12 getting off to a nice strong start. And Fabian, uh, very strong in New Zealand, his home race last time out several weeks ago. In its season, when you look at the sine wave of his championship season so far, it's been up and down. He got off to a ripping start with the first pole of the year for Mustang. And then there were various gremlins through the Adelaide weekend. He's had a couple of real belts to his championship season. But he said to us, uh, I think going into the New Zealand weekend, as we look here at James Courtney car number 22, is he going to be able to get out of there? Only just. Gee, just got out. <laughs> and he is in the car at the moment, James. So he's sitting fifth uh, on those numbers that we've got up so far on 2 minute 5.8. He only squeaked away with that one, didn't he? That's a long way off the road, but Pumbo, without a mechanical failure. Now, that may have had a mechanical failure. That is so far down to that trap. I, I, I don't think I've seen a car in that deep without some other drama going. Now, Scott McLaughlin's on screen here at the moment. He's the fastest with a two minute 5.3 and he's got his ears on, he's on his in lap. Good afternoon, Mr. McLaughlin. Afternoon, boys. How are you, mate? What's the car like? And give us a read on the track. Uh, car's good, track's fast, lots of people out. It's really good to see, so a um, little bit loose. A uh, bit to exit for me, but uh, yeah, we're getting, it, we're getting it pretty good. I didn't realize it was P1 there because Sometimes they don't tell me anything, so it's nice to know. I can play Ludo for a minute, mate. So it's uh, Scott McLaughlin, you might know him, by a tiny margin of five one hundredths of a second from Fabian Coulthard on a two minute 5.3. Oh, nice. That's good. Well, good start. We'll push on. <laughs> uh, so in terms of the first rollout earlier in the day in the first practice session, Scotty, were you surprised at the pace that you saw early on? Yeah, I was and wasn't. Uh, I, I figured that you know, everyone's probably going to bowl to seven tyres there at the end and have a crack. and. Yeah, certainly 4.6 is very fast, so uh, I reckon if it's dry, it'll be mid threes, I reckon. Um, Alex Premer did a good job, Scotty, in the co-driver session. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was proud of him. He did a good job, and he was uh, yeah, well across it. So, yeah, no, it's all good. We're, we're feeling really comfortable, which is really good going into the next few days. And you had a taste last year getting on the podium, so uh, you know what it feels like now. And you had that big pole position in 2017, so you've got this place squarely in the gun sights this weekend. Yeah, yeah, this is the one we want, boys. So uh, you guys uh, you guys know how big it is, so uh, we'll see how we go. All right, mate, let you get on with it. Thanks for talking Thanks. to us. Cheers, see you guys.
So good of Scott McLaughlin and the team to allow us to have a quick conversation on his in-lap there. And you can see Alex Primer in the background. So he'll now download with some hot conversation about the way in which that car feels. He's about to be challenged at the top of the pop charts here because Will Davison's done a 50.9 in the first sector. Mark's circling in front of me the insanely tight margins between the top cars. Unbelievable. 0.05 from first to second, 0.05 from second to third, 0.09 from third to fourth. So 0.16 of a second separates the top five cars around a more than two minute lap. <laughs> it's extraordinary. Twice a winner of the great race, Will Davison on screen, 2016 and 2009. And he's done a personal best in the mid sector. He's done a 33.3. He's only one tenth of a second slower than Scott McLaughlin. He's done a better sector one than anybody in the field. Love those shots. The approach and the departure and the run into the chase. Gets it back to second gear. Just kisses that inside apex a little. Doesn't launch it hard over the curb. The car looks really stable on the direction change and the shift from second to third gear. Now he's into that final corner. So this is going to threaten McLaughlin. He's on a 5-3 already, Davison. And he goes to the top on a 4-9. Great job. Milwaukee Racing in the Tickford Ford Mustang. There's Alex. Uh, I'm going to bring it in, mate. I'm going to bring it in. And Richard Davison uh, was sitting there as well. Yeah, cars improved. Certainly the trail braking in front. Uh, the rear is, uh, rear is quite loose. Just generally everywhere. It's very nosy, the car but it's quick. And that's the way to make them quick. <laughs> that's as, as harsh as it is, when the car balances like that, it's when they're fast. It's probably a nice qualifying car. You can do it for a lap. The problem is that it's hard to drive over the journey like that because it'll take you into the realm of making mistakes. So this is what happened to James Courtney. And uh, Mark was wondering out aloud how far he got down the road and why. And that's why. So once you have that lock up down there and you're traveling at a massive rate of knots, difficult to recover so he did manage to skate out the other side go back up to Forest's elbow now Ooh. <laughs> Richie Stanaway wags the tail out of that corner up there in a big lock up for car number 27 this is Alex Rossi over the top of the hill uses the shortcut to escape that one when the cars are unweighted and this is what is what makes them very different to the open wheelers they've got in Global terms, next to no aero. We've got 300 kil kilograms of aero at 200 kilometres an hour. This is a bit more of the action for James Courtney. Um, and as the speed bleeds off, obviously so does the aero. And then when you roll the weight in the car, remember they're near enough, call it a tonne and a half for simplicity. If you've got too much brake pressure, you can lock up those brakes, thus the blue smoke you see. Then you can't steer the car. So it all compounds against you. James Courtney had a similar occurrence at the bottom of the hill. These guys just did a great job. Anton Di Pasquale just did a 4.91, so he's 0.01 slower than Will Davison. So that's a superb lap. Remember, Di Pasquale was very impressive in qualifying here last year. And Dave Reynolds will be looking on as this unfolds because they started those two cars very similar. He'll know that although he's missed his own track time, and oh, that was pretty wide, he missed the apex by more than a car width. He ran it into the cutting. We saw that caught Macaulay Jones out in the previous session over down there at uh, practice one. But it's a spot where you've got to have a healthy respect for the braking area, and that hurt Anton on the approach to the cutting. Because he's familiar to us in the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship, we tend to talk about him like he's been around forever. Last year was his first Bathurst yep. in the main game, and he was impressive. Qualified in third. They ran second for a chunk of the day in car number 99, and that's a good combination, Anton and Will. Car number six, a good combination as well. It's Cam Waters, and he's just moved up into fourth position, and he's with Michael Caruso. We saw Michael standing in the pit lane in conversation earlier in this first part of the practice session. Greg. Well, Scabie, there's a fair bit of uh, shingle down here, mate. Uh, just being plucked out of the car 22. I knew you'd like that. Look at this over here. There's piles of it, absolutely piles of it. Uh, but I thought I'd just quickly grab uh, Jack Perkins. Uh, just, was there any issue there for James, or was that just a little bit of a young bloke cold tyres? <laughs> I don't know if he's that young anymore, but um, no, I just nice. said he uh, jumped on the brake and just locked the tyres straight away. I don't know, there's a couple other cars went off before him, so I think whether they're going quicker or start a different wind direction or what, I'm not sure, but yeah. 
not, nothing too bad. Just picked up a lot of stones by the look of it. Uh, it's shingle. Hey, but um, anyway, your session previously, co-driver session, then how was the car for you in that, that situation and, and did you improve it? Yeah, we definitely improved it. The car was really ordinary when James started the day um, and we've been able to you know, make some, some progress, which is really good. But um, now the guys need to start thinking about qualifying simulation straight away and James hasn't had a really good tyre on it yet, so they've just got to start thinking about the one lap pace. We've had quite high fuel loads in it up, up until now as well, so... Um, you know, it's like mate, it's only Thursday, we're not getting too stressed about it. It'd be nice to be a bit more competitive, but we'll, we'll get there. Do you expect to see some new tyres on it later? I, I think so, yeah. I'd be surprised if anyone decided not to, because uh, you've got to punch the numbers and just start doing the quick times if you're going to qualify in the shootout. So, James got in the 10 the last two years, so hopefully we can do it again. Thanks, JP. Cheers, mate. The shingle. It's the shingle. And Jack got in the top 10 back in 2014 as well, which was an impressive effort. He's had three eighth places at this place, Jack Perkins, and he runs this weekend into his 14th Bathurst 1000. Answering his question about possible reasons why James went off, I'll have a little side bet on the wind because it's about 11 or 12 kilometres an hour from the south where in the first couple of sessions during the day there was nothing happening in session one and there was a little bit of westerly in the second session. So... Uh, 10 kilometres an hour on the tail when you're going into the braking area down there and if you just get a bit adventurous and a bit brave under brakes, it's really easy to make a mistake there. Venturing back up to the top of the hill on the replay, looking at Scott McLaughlin, who's moved back down into third position now. Two wheels. He's got the right side of the car where if you were imagining where a car would be placed here, it'd be a car width further across the road, but it isn't. The boys and girl exploit everything out there. And then once you've launched over that kerb, this is the subsequent effect of that. So you, because it's gone up in the air, the front tires stop when it lands. It's skidding across the road. The drivers can feel that both in the steering wheel and in the brake pedal. And they modulate the brake pedal accordingly to be able to release it. But the conflicting problems there because the more you release the brake pedal, the closer you are to the accident yes. and the faster you are exactly. on the way to the accident. If Scott had his time again, he wouldn't have used that much curb on that one. No. Spoke about this car a little bit earlier on, so satisfied with progress so far for Shane Van Gisbergen and for Garth Tander. And grab the person in the background. So Shane Van Gisbergen moves up into fifth position, celebrating 50 years of Holden Factory support in the great race. And they've gone back to reflect the colours of the Colin Bontarana all those years ago. The design team at Holden have come up with that livery. Looks pretty smart for the Red Bull Holden racing team. And I'm looking for... Where's Car Triple Eight at the moment? Windcup's down in ninth position. He's done a 5-4. He's still in the garage. And we heard Grant McPherson bringing Shane in. He's in fifth position off a of 5-2. There was a little bit of... Um, cut and polishing and a bit more going on with this car as well with the Todd Hazelwood SP Tools entry. Jack Smith uh, gave it a rub up against the wall. And commending everybody at Batstone Racing for the way in which uh, this car has been presented this weekend. They've done a nice job. And uh, I wandered through the garage just to have a look and it had a, quite a scuff down the left hand side of it. It's a pretty easy trap into turn two where Jack Smith was unable to get the car slowed enough and ran wide, bumped the tyres on the left-hand side. Often when you hit those tyres on the left-hand side, it drags you in under the tyre bundle and it swallows you, you battle it? to extract yeah. the car, don't you? So he got away with it. It wasn't as heavy as we've seen some over the years. So Will Davison with a 4.90. Anton Di Pasquale with a 4.91. McLaughlin, 507. Cam Waters, 509. Van Gisbergen, 527. Coulthard, 538. And Percat, Kelly, Winkup, and Heimgartner round out the 10. So we've got all three manufacturers in the top 10. And the top 10 at the moment is separated by 0.7 of a second. So often I like to just sit back and consider what it all means at the end of Thursday practice, just watching Richie Stanaway doing pretty much exactly what happened to Macaulay Jones on the run up towards turn four there, just getting a little bit deep. And if you feed the gear too early as well, it'll lock the rear. And car number five, Botlo Racing entry. This is shared by uh, Lee Holdsworth and Thomas Randall. 
and just gets into the dirt there. Gets back on without too much damage done. No great issues. They're down in 13th position at the moment. Um, my take, and I'm interested in yours on this one as well, Mark, at the moment, is that it's, it's very tight. It's very even. You know, there's no one where I go and point at that garage and go, that car, that combo. Yeah. Wow, they're doing wheel stands. Stand back, everybody. You're looking at it at the moment. It looks like there's, and this is great news for everybody watching at home through the weekend, it could be as many as five, six or more cars here that are absolute contenders in the combinations between primary and co-drivers and through different garages, different brands, different teams, different sponsors, it's tight. Yeah, and I reckon it might have been more than six. You look at the numbers for, say, Cam Waters and Caruso, you look back, I tell you, he'll be a stronger combination than I thought they would be as Heimgarten and Bryce Forward. Yeah. They're going to they're be strong. Rick Kelly's really comfortable with that car, with Dale Wood. So when you, when you start to look at the top 10 or 12, there's a lot of combinations that are in contention. Good problem to have. It is. So James Courtney's uh, got all that shingle out of the car. I've <laughs> got to explain that to you, folks. In New Zealand, they call the debris and all the, what we call the marbles and all the things on the outside of the road that makes it dirty. We normally just call it dirt or gravel. Or something worse. Or whatever. That uh, ends up on the outside of the road, especially when you've gone off the road and gone through the sand trap. And uh, Murph in New Zealand, they've got a special word for it called shingle, and it's always made me laugh. Now, remember I said, what, three, four minutes ago, five minutes ago, it was 11 k's from the south? 25. Just up to 25 k's, you'll feel that in the car. Went up the top of the hill between sessions, and uh, there's a huge crowd of people building up there at the moment. It's got a tremendous atmosphere. It was great to see Mark Larkin up there earlier in the day, enthusing about that. And uh, the passion that people show up there for their respective drivers, teams and colours, uh, you know, it's it's absolutely fantastic. Murph? You know I like making you laugh, Scafie. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. good, mate. I like it. It's Michael Crusoe makes me laugh. Uh, mate, I'm, uh, I'm still coming to grips with you in this gear, to be honest. Put your sandwich away. He's eating. I'm just interrupting him while he's getting a bit of suts and a few carbohydrates in there. I'm still getting used to you wearing this gear and not to, in a, you know, a Nissan anymore. But uh, how was your session earlier on today? Um, I heard you're a little bit angry. I wasn't angry. I guess they descriptive, just very descriptive. I, I went a little Murph. I went a little Murph. Channeled You'd some appreciate. Murph. Um, when I got in, I've been driving the car all year. Obviously, different tracks, practice sessions. We just finished a test, say. I was driving around. Easy. Out the window, you know, just doing an easy armchair in it. I jumped in today, and I'm like. Yeah, it was an eye opener, but the good thing is the window's really big, so um, we've tuned it up. Obviously, Camo is loving it now, um, which is good as well. You know what it's like. You don't want to scare yourself early in the weekend, and you want to work towards a car that's going to be good over 161 laps. But by the looks of this session, it's going to get pretty quick soon. It is going to get pretty quick soon. Uh, so new tyres going to be uh, flung on the, the machine. Um, I don't know. I, I stay out of the plan, but uh, I dare say they'll put some good tyres on it because uh, it's we're, we're obviously in a similar time today to what qualifying will be tomorrow, so it'll be a, probably a good run for everybody to get to know what they got. Thanks, mate. Thanks. Michael Crusoe caught short there, just trying to uh, finish off that sandwich. He's got a bit of a gurgle going in the background too. He had a cold last week. He's just shaking the effects off of that. We're back inside car number 17. Scott McLaughlin at the moment is back at the top. Two minutes, 4.8. And that certainly won't help him if he gets a dose of Greg Murphy's attitude. <laughs> you too. That will, not, that will not help. Play nice. It's only Thursday. <laughs> Three one hundredths of a second is the margin between McLaughlin and Davison at the moment. Anthony Pasquale is up in third position from Cam Waters, Shane Van Gisberg and Fabian Coulthard's in the lane. Then Nick Perkett, James Golding, Lee Holdsworth and Rick Kelly. McLaughlin's doing a run. He's just, he did a 4.86 that you reported to be fastest. He just did a 5.07 mm. on the last lap. He's done a bunch of laps. Oh, oh my God, that's close. Yeah, James Courtney nearly hung the part number of the bumper on the wall up there that time. That was before, uh, off. We had a look at the replay and off down the bottom. Car number 99. So Anton at the helm there. And quite wisely decides to bring it back in and have a think about it. Yeah, sorry, you were saying about Scotty doing his race that, run. That's a really impressive run at the moment. 
David Reynolds is lurking in the background. We might have a chat to him very shortly. They're out of the session in car number nine because of the damage repairs going on. But it would be interesting, I don't want to harp too much on what happened earlier because it's just negative, but his comments and thoughts on the racetrack, what he's seen so far and what the opposition are doing, it'd be interesting for us to find out. So we'll have a bit of a chat to David when he's got a spare moment. Dean Cat has gone back out in car number 21. And meantime, Shane Van Gisbergen's bringing up nice numbers here at the moment from fifth position. I talked before about the disparity in experience between Macaulay Jones and Dean Cantor. So when you look at them in sort of overall ranking terms, they're 10th in terms of experience, but it's because Dino's done it 20 times <laughs> and for Macaulay's done it four times. So a vast amount of experience in the co-driver's seat. Now, picking up car number 97, as I said a few moments ago, because these guys are looking strong at the moment. So Shane, who hasn't had a set of tyres so far today, as in a fresh set or a better set, has done the best time that we've seen in sector one, and now the best time that we've seen in sector two. So his cumulative is a 124 flat in the braking area at the bottom of the chase now. Remember, was it last year where he was having a horrid time early in the weekend flying off the road? Remember all that? Yep, yep. So off to a much cleaner start in 2019. This is a good lap. A beautiful lap if you can keep it glued together here. It's pulled up nice and square into the final corner. The target is a 4.8. McLaughlin holds that, and it's just been shifted to a 4.6. Shane Van Gisbergen's done a two-minute 4.6223. Graham McPherson, engineer in the foreground with Garth Tander, the co-driver in the background. And that is the fastest time we've seen today. In fact, that's the fastest practice time ever. That's a, that's a very impressive number and actually tallies with what Garth Tand told me earlier about the behaviour of the car and the way they're feeling about things so far this weekend. He's on board uh, with Shane Van Gisbergen, most recently a winner of the Jason Richards Trophy in New Zealand for the second time in his career, a special moment at his home racetrack. And he loves this place. It would be hard for him, and I, I look at it and feel the emotion of it, to think about what happened in 2014 for him when he was in such a commanding position and then it got away from him in that stop. Mirko's in conversation here with Anton and when we last saw Anton, he just slipped off the road at the bottom of the hill. David Reynolds is down there. I presume you're listening to me at the moment, Mr Reynolds? Uh, yeah, I good, can hear. Good. It's a bit weird hearing your voice during session, but uh, it's, a, it's a good voice to hear. Oh, thank you, David. I like you too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I know, you know tough circumstances, and I don't want to dwell on the stuff. It's all pretty self-explanatory what happened to your good friend and teammate next to you. But uh, interested in the, your take on the track so far. You've been very fast here in years gone by, and the way in which things are evolving out there at the moment, David. Uh, yeah, I thought the track wasn't quite as grippy as, as what I thought it was um, last year. I, last year, my car was heaps better when I, uh, you know, obviously finished the race. I thought I had way more grip than I did at the start. But um, otherwise than that, it was early session, like old tyres, heaps of fuel, um, low confidence. Um, but otherwise than that, mate, you know, I think we'll get the car back together. If you can see there, it's, it's having a bit of a rest, but... Um, yeah, we'll get it back together, together and have a bigger shot tomorrow. Davey, just put uh, put your independent hat on for a second. Yeah. And yeah. to put yourself into Mark and Neil world, <laughs> what's your review of what you see in that session at the moment in terms of pace for the day? Red Bull Holden Racing Team, DJ Team Penske, the Tickford cars, what's your read? Um, yeah, you, you see all the usual sucks, suspects up, up there. Um, it's, uh, sorry, um, obviously, Car 97, hang on, I've got to take these things. Car 97's doing a fantastic job. Um, you know, Anton's doing a good job with a set of tyres he's got on right now, but it's the usual suspects. Like, the, all the Fords got a chance, I think. There's probably five Holden cars that can win the race. Um, otherwise than that, you know, I wish I was just out there. It just sucks standing here watching. I just can't do anything about it, but, you know, them's the brakes, I'm sorry. Um, so, Davey, uh, you and I spoke prior to the race meeting when I came down and saw you in Melbourne there a few weeks ago, and you put a big effort into your prep going in this weekend. Uh, do you feel in better shape? You, know, you feel like you've got yourself in the zone correctly for the weekend? Uh, yeah, I feel heaps better than I did last year. I'm in a much better spot. 
you know, this time last year I was just absolutely knackered, getting pulled pillar from pillar from post. But yeah, I'm feeling much better, thanks, Neil. But yeah, we've got a special guy helping me out with my um, with my nutrition and stuff, and he's monitoring all the all the drivers up, you know, all the four drivers. So you know, we're in a much better position. There's not a lot of pressure. You know, there's a lot more pressure in, in our team here last year, I think. But you know, we'll, we'll rise to the occasion on Sunday again. Did you take your uh, grey beard advice from Uncle Mark and say no to more things? I did, thanks, Mark. I said no to a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Very good work, young David. Well done. <laughs> oh, what are you boys doing? How's the commentary box going? Oh, mate, it's nice. It's it's air condition, it's about 21 degrees. Yeah, not a lot of stress up there, is it? Not there? much stress. We're well balanced. It's well yeah, balanced, well the commentary <laughs> box. It's uh, turning in nicely. It's got no oversteer. We're driving it very well. Just ask us. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you would do that too. You Thanks, drive mate. better at night though at the pub apparently. <laughs> Go away now, David. Yeah, that's right. enough now. Thanks, boys. Thanks for talking to me. See, See you, mate. We'll, we'll come back to you a bit later. Appreciate you taking time out in a tough day. No worries. Cheers. Thanks, boys. See you, mate. It's a good lap here. It's got pie. He's a good lap. I, I reported earlier in the day the ridiculous form that he's brought together with Warren Love to the racetrack in the last couple of years as the runner-up 2017 and 2018. So nice work here. Personal best sector one. Absolutely the fastest across the top of the hill and about to cross the line here to give us a read. It'll move him right into the top of the party here. So he's in the top ten, up six spots, position seven on a 5-2. And that reeks to me like it's got a fair bit of downforce on it, so it's very fast across the top of the hill but not so fast in sector one and sector three. So the straight line running of that car, they'll, they'll be looking at that. Rob Starr will be looking at how much wing he can take off that car to get some straight line speed back. And overall, very good quality lap to be seventh for Scott Pye, but a 5.26, six tenths away from Van Gisberg and on a 4.6. So 33.1 for Scott Pye on that lap. I'm just going back and looking for timing references over the top of the hill. So that's position 23 for car two. So the 23rd fastest car in a straight line, Scott right. Pye. Okay. So just looking at the times, so if we go and find the very fastest ever, which will be based on, you know, if you can put together different people's laps. In the top 10 shootout 2018, uh, David Reynolds did a 50.5 in sector one. Well, at the moment, Van Gisbergen's got a 50.8. So we are almost on the verge of those record-breaking speeds sector-wise. And then McLaughlin, uh, top 10 shootout in the mid-sector, has done a 32.8 previously. Well, Scott Pye just did a 33.1. And that last sector, which today is a 40.54 so far with McLaughlin, Wind Cup's done a 40.19 here. So considering that we're talking Thursday, and I've just compared numbers out of qualifying and shootouts, with qualifying in the shootout, it's where you're, everything's mint, everything's pristine. You've trimmed your car, your brain's right, you've got the best tyres on it, you've had multiple goes at it. You and your engineers have boffined away for three days at that point, or two days at that point for quality, and then top 10 shootout becomes three days, and it's your best foot forward. Remind everybody that what we're watching at the moment is practice on day one. It's a very different animal. Totally. Track condition, car setup, mentality, which you referred to of driving the car as well as you can. You certainly won't be doing that yet. And it, it is a very difficult racetrack to coax your way into going faster. There's a lot of work on not slowing the car too much and you have to end up with a, a flow and a, a rhythm around the place to get the, the best from yourself and the car and as soon as you try to stop it and start it too much you never get that pace in fact i was talking to james hinchcliffe down in the wild card pit area a little while ago and we're just talking about that and he said look all the bottom of the track's easy i can do all the bottom of the track no drama at all the top of the hill is actually not as bad as i thought it's down the hill is the bit that really gets me yeah I, and we've picked up mostert for good reason here because his mid sector's better than anybody we've seen in this session he's done a 33.1 i reckon climbing the hill is kind of fun feels secure but off the top is where you feel that greatest risk this is going to be a potentially great lap here for Chaz mostert he's sitting on a two minute 5.8 at the moment Cleanly through and out of the final corner. Position number six, up 11 spots. He's also in the four club. 
laps and a two minute 4.95 back to McLaughlin who's sitting second at the moment two tenths shy of Shane Van Gisbergen it's extraordinary that these two who've battled previously for championships find themselves after the 24th race of our championship season first and second in the championship however this time around they're 598 points apart and you know when you think about their dominance through the last few seasons and the battles we've seen in the championship to consider both these young Kiwis have not won this race. It's extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. And uh, they both had good opportunities and great equipment. And I mean, think about a couple of years ago for McLaughlin, Val Spring lets them down out of business. Yeah, or well, even in the Volvo, he was on to win when he ended up in the fence coming out of the cutting. Then Shane Van Gisberg had fired the car down there. Now he buggered that last lap, so he already come out of it he backed it off he reported back in that he was going to go again but he then caught the dirt coming out of turn one so i don't think this is going to serve him well going up the hill either rihanna so many do so best i just got out of the car sharing this session with alex rulo how is your day unfolding so far today yeah it's been uh, pretty good definitely uh now this session was a bit like tougher because we have uh, quite a lot of understeer in the car and we seem to try things but it's not really reacting to it so uh yeah, we're going to kind of look at the data a bit and come up with a proper plan to attack that tomorrow. And uh, yeah, giving Alex a little bit of uh, a lapse because uh, he had a session before and kind of getting him up to speed because we know he's quick, but he just, uh, you know, needs a few laps out there to, to get his groove back because he hasn't driven anything for so long. When I spoke to you earlier today after the first session, you were, you were pretty happy, pretty excited about that session. What sort of happened throughout the day? Yeah, I'm still pretty happy. You know, I think the tires we're running at the moment are not great. And uh, yeah, we just, uh, I think we need to get the car a little bit better. Uh, this morning, your know, track was quite green, but now you got a bit of a groove. So just a few little things are starting to pop out that we need to address. And uh, yeah, we'll just work on it. There's still a lot of practice in front of us. So we should be all right. Thanks, Amina. Thanks. Team Harvey Norman car in the hands of Simona was 10th fastest in that first session. Did a 2 minute 5.4. She's on a 5.7 at the moment. Now keep an eye on McLaughlin here. Listen to this one. Deep. Throws it through the right hander at the chase. Buries the nose under brakes. Would have had big brake temperature and pressure at the bottom of the hill there. The reason there's a bit of excitement in the voice is that he's done the fastest two first sectors on the racetrack and he's got Van Gisbergen not far behind him, also shadowing on the numbers. Both of them are at great speed at the moment. And McLaughlin now to the top on a low four, a two minute 4.2. And we potentially get an immediate response here from Van Gisbergen, his nearest rival in the championship. And Shane does a 4.8 on that lap. So a two minute 4.2 for Scott McLaughlin. He's got the third of a second over Shane Van Gisbergen. That's speedy. This is going to be a fast race. This is this amazing shot. Have a look at that. Two wheels. How many wheels? I don't think there was any there for a minute, well, was there? I, I, actually, I'd love to see that again in slow-mo because I, I, I looked at the two the on the inside and then when I looked back to the right, I kind of went, oh, it might be all four. That, it was. All four off the road. Ouch. Was that a scrape? That was very close, wasn't Pretty it? Pretty close to it. That was 34, James Golding. Watch this. Here it is again. Count so them. I'm looking to the right this time because I got trapped looking on the wrong side last time. Yeah, I reckon, I reckon they're all they off. are all off the deck. Yeah. Uh, you'd certainly sneak a feeler gauge in under those on the left-hand side of the car. There's a... Bradley used to say it, and I know you did too, we came up here years ago, that you weren't actually properly committed over there until you had the thing quote unquote wriggling. Yeah. It's got to wriggle when you get over the top of Skyline. And if it's not, you better find a way to brake later. It's not that easy. It's a mad Understand road, that the approach there is about 215 kilometres an hour to something that you can't see on the other side, which ultimately requires you to be back to 80 kilometres an hour at the dipper in second gear. At the point where you arrive at Skyline, you're in fourth at warp speed. Now, what's Van Gisbergen serving up for us here? Uh, he's 50.9 in sector one's a bit slower than McLaughlin, who's done a 50.8. He's done a 33.2 in the mid sector, so he's actually given away a little bit of time over the top of the hill. Ooh, had a little wriggle when he just went to make the apex. He turned it. It, it initially responded to the steering input quite nicely, but then it was just on the verge of blocking the rears as he got it to the corner and did it again there. Just escaped at the back, and that will hurt the last sector a little bit. 
but a good time anyway, a 4.8. So 4.6 was his fastest, now a 4.8 for Van Gisberg, and that was his second lap, so that's a pretty good job. Which made me wonder whether the, he was about to attempt a run, but then I heard Grant call him. So more conversation between Van Gisberg and, and Grant McPherson, and they're paying attention to fuel burns there because one of the things that will become very important on Sunday is to make lap speed and not burn as much fuel as you might otherwise do if you don't pay attention to it. So the way in which they downshift, the way in which they pick up the throttle, the way in which they manage throttle percentage during safety cars, uh, all of those things will come into account upshifting at specific moments because if they can find a way, and I've done stories on this in recent years, to really just save a thimble full of fuel here and there so when you get to the last two refuel moments, you get topped up and exit the pits quicker than those that you're racing, those few tents can make a difference, bearing in mind that there's, I haven't got the stat in front of me right at the moment, but I think eight of the last 13 races have been determined by less than a second. So the margins are crazy tiny on Sunday. We know there are safety car interruptions. There are only three safety car interventions last year. But the way in which you manage your fuel efficiency and get yourself in position for those last two stints of the race is going to make a material difference at the end of this. So just under 20 minutes remaining. Definitely in the last 10 minutes, you'll see some green or new tyres go on. And this is the harder of our Dunlop variants we're using at Bathurst weekend. We've got nine sets of heaps of tyres to be able to chuck at the cars. The only thing about it is, in typical fashion, if you are a little discretionary on the tyre usage leading into the race, you can put a green tyre on in the race and get a yield from that. So that usually, if the car's good, you limit the amount of tyres that you need for qualifying, and that has a big bearing on your pace through the course of the race after the stop. That was an off-the-road moment almost there for Courtney. And he just got away with it. I uh, dug up my paperwork MS, so uh, it was eight of the last 13 under a second. Craig Lowndes actually ruined that for us last year because it was a really nice little theme. I've had a crack at him a couple of times about it, but it's the biggest gap we've had for ages. It was six seconds after a 1,000 kilometres of racing. <laughs> it's better than six laps in 1979 for Peter Brock. It was. <laughs> Here we go. Now, this is another moment for James. It just gets away from him. He uses too much of that exit curb. There's been a few of those, hasn't there, so far this weekend? for him. Oh, well, actually, that wasn't car off yeah. the road. Yeah, I thought it was too off, but uh, uh, it was well and truly bowled wide. This is the Matstone Racing entry here, the Todd Hazelwood car, number 35. The other thing I really love is just the sound of these cars at this place. The Supercar Symphony is worth just listening to. It's a bit relaxed today. We're not racing for sheep stations. So there's a little cluster of cars on the way to the chase. Listen to this. Everything's correct in the world. Yes, it's very good, isn't it? That's just a whisker under peak revs. 600 and whatever you'd like to call it horsepower. 25, 30 odd horsepower and just on 300 kilometres an hour. And the cars just sound magnificent in that spot. Todd Hazelwood, at the end of that lap that we witnessed him exiting for our Selbo, he ended up coming up tonight. So it's a pretty good job for young Todd. That was a 5-2. So one second is 11 cars at the moment. That'll tighten up as better tyres go on these cars at the end of this session. Also just keeping a bit of an eye on the lap count as the Deep Squally brown car heads uh, back out again. And actually the fastest car is equal amongst those that have done the most laps. Uh, so that's Scott McLaughlin who's done 14 of them. And the reason that becomes important when we sit down and look at the data at the end of the day, it's not only a question of who's done what as peak speed, because that's the Hollywood stuff that we celebrate. You need to look deeper into the numbers to see who's done a run, what the trend looked like through that run. 
because they need to put data together on brake pad wear, brake disc wear, the fuel consumption, what the tyres are doing over the journey, because they need to know what's going to happen near the back end of their stints and how they plan this race from a strategic standpoint, because there is a requirement in this race to change the front brake rotors at least once. That's a big thing to do. We thought it was going to trip more people over last year than it absolutely did. Little wing adjustment going on on the back of the Van Gisbergen and Tanner car. Coming off, I think. It was a little bit less wing. Holdsworth, while we're just focused on those wings, just jumped up into second position on a 4-4. Heimgartner. Position number three, up 15 spots on a 4-6. That's a fantastic number. Fastest last sector. That is a great number. And he's been showing this kind of promise through the championship season. We've talked about it quite a bit this year, haven't we, Mark? I mean, he's had some pretty spectacular runs, including a podium. But that is a fantastic performance. So he was third at Phillip Island, got himself onto the podium. And there's been some tremendous consistency. Back with Mark Winterbottom here in Carnival 18 for Irwin Tools. He's sitting in 20th at the moment. He's on a two minute 5.8. You've got to be a good team. Stephen Richards and Mark Winterbottom. They've been successful before. Very level head, calm, experienced duo. And they'll figure in the results if they can just stay out of trouble in those early laps. Fabian Coulthard did a pretty good lap there before. In fact, he was the fastest in the last sector, but Heimgartner was able to knock that off. Oh, a big slide there. Percat in front. It was actually a great image there. We flicked on board with Fabian, and we caught Nick having a big slide. Nice car control into the left-hander at the chase. Nick Perkett's currently 13. He is doing a run, I think, by the look of that. Pretty much the whole run. Saw that car of Fabian's um, when we were watching it, witnessing it running down the Conrod. It, it had what looked to be a fairly serious amount of rear wing vibration. Yeah, it did. Yeah. That's a cool shot, isn't it? Isn't it great? This is Jamie Wincup. Back with Triple Eight on the car this weekend, sharing with Craig Lance. He's sitting down in 18th at the moment. Having jumped out of the gate first thing this morning and done a pretty impressive number back to McLaughlin. He's the fastest on a 4 2. He's done a 50.9. He's one tenth slower than his own personal best in Sector 1. We don't have a read on him in Sector 2 until he gets down towards Forest Selbo. Do you see how much curve he uses there? But yeah, definitely less. So more to the right at the left hander of the S's. She came away from the apex at the S's that time too, which tightens up the left-hander into the dipper. And we get that second read here in a moment, and it actually it's the best we've seen. Yeah. So uh, it didn't matter that he wasn't exactly at the target spot on the rundown towards the hollow in the dipper. So he's potentially on here to go to, into the threes. To get into the threes, yeah. which he's done before but it was a couple of years ago. So he's a tenth slower, almost exactly in sector one than his own personal best. He's just moved the marker over the top of the hill. Oh, it, oh, hits the marks oh, down oh, the bottom, oh. but I don't reckon that had a millimetre left in it. Oh, that, that was so at close. the grip threshold of those Dunlop tyres. Down to the final corner now for the championship leader. He's got 598 points up his sleeve. He's out to make a big statement this weekend, and he does a two minute 4.3. Didn't quite glue it together in sector three. I reckon now, Heim Gardner for a slide. Don't you? You reckon that, that slide of the chase? There's yeah. another one. Yeah. So Heimgartner's actually the fastest in sector three in the Nissan. That's an outstanding run. Now, just have a look at this. Now, I caught this just before, and I went, eh, did I see things or was it real? But I wondered whether that rear wing's got a shake going, and it has. it has. So those rear wing end plates are just rattling all over the place. So is it the end plates, do you reckon, or the, the boot lid? That's a lot of movement. Alex Premer and Ludo Lacroix, Mark Fenning in the foreground there as well. So, so far, fastest in Sector 1, McLaughlin. Fastest in Sector 2, McLaughlin. Fastest in Sector 3, Heimgartner. 
0.15 of a second is the gap between McLaughlin and Holdsworth. And we've got uh, two Mustangs followed by a Nissan. And on that topic is another one of them. It's uh, Rick Kelly, two personal bests for him. He was sitting in 17th, but if these numbers continue as they are, you potentially shuffle that up the order when he gets across the finish line area. The start line and the finish line are offset at Mount Panorama. How's that? Position nice. number oh. three. Uh, low fours for Rick Kelly in the silver bullet. Position three, two minute 4.49 the former race winner just in front of his teammate Andre Heimgartner that's an outstanding fast lap for Rick car looks good doesn't it in that Russell Engel tribute livery in the silver front of that car and the way that they've been able to apply themselves so far today has been very impressive because they've been strong all day little tweak to the rear boot lid and the rear wing from an aero perspective for the Nissan this weekend. It looks like it's had a nice effect. Been uh, searching for just the ideal balance. I mean, in pricey, they've been moving the centre of pressure around on that car a little bit just to try and find a happy zone. They changed it year on year. It wasn't ultimately to their satisfaction. They kind of moved it back to last season's spec, and now there's been another small shift. It's a pretty good lap, because this is faster again. And that cloud cover's actually increasing too, I just noticed on that wider shot. So what's he done over the top? 51.04. So he's about a tenth and a half slower than McLaughlin in sector one. And we'll get a read on him in sector two when he exits Forest's elbow here in just a moment. He's backed it off. Yeah, 34.7, so he's given it a swerve. But he's probably got more than enough of a read now on the car to understand cause and effect. But th they'll be pretty happy, I'd imagine, with those those numbers. So at the moment, we've got Rick in third, Andre in fourth, both in the Nissans as we pick up Cam Waters. Gary Jacobson is 15th at the moment. Alex Rullo is 19th. Cam Waters currently sitting in 10th, but he's done personal best. We're inside 10 minutes in this session now, so there's potentially a bit of happy hour action to come. It certainly is. As we look at Cam Waters finishing off this lap, this will be his best. He's caught a little bit of curve. Probably seen overall that the Tickford cars look a little bit more oversteery, a little bit more of rear grip issue and the amount of slide they've got going, especially on the change of direction there between the left and right at the chase and the way out of the final corner. So Cam Waters comes up five spots up into sixth with a 4-6. So have a look at the margins. There's three tenths of a second across three different brands and the top six cars. All right, let's have a look at this replay and see whether or not there's, yep. there is wall contact. So McLaughlin's actually found the limits there. It was on the slide pretty early, so he must have jammed that throttle open pretty quick and he's just rattled the concrete wall. We'll probably see it better from this angle. I think it's the front and the back, doesn't he? Oh. Just giving it a wipe. The Bottom of the wheel. Yeah, the, 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 I'd have a long, hard look at the fascia on that rim. It's a good wall, that one, because it's actually got a little... That is, it's got a little bit of angle from the bottom to the top where you can actually bump the bottom without wiping the side of the car. And you can bump the mirror. Normally, the mirror will just give you a little guide. Huh? Just a little update uh, for you fellas on what's going on with this tyre situation down here. Scott McLaughlin's actually now rolling. He's got greens down the right-hand side and a couple of scrubbed or used ones on the left-hand side. Andre Heimgartner was on a 20k set hold from Taylor Ben that he did that lap on. Rick Kelly was on a green and Chaz Molston now also just rolling out the garage on a set of green Dunlop soft tyres. Hey Murph, I just want to pick up on Chaz Mostert's car. Guys, look how low this thing is at the back. Look at that. Now there was a time earlier in the year where I could have pointed at any Mustang and you would have fitted Mark Scaife's wallet beneath the tyre and the mudguard. There was that much. Yeah, exactly, Spud. How much? That Greg Murphy there? That much gap. Uh, because you want the car to turn. And it tells you volumes about Bathurst when they take the car from having a lot of wedge like that and they flatten it right down like that because they want it to nail through the air at 300k down the straight. And I'm blown away by just how much. The other thing, 
the wings on these cars, these shell cars, very flat. The wing on that Chas Monster car, if you get to see it, is right up. More than one way to skin the cat. You know, they go about their craft in very different ways. Depends on what the drivers are looking for and the overall philosophy around the car. Now, Di Pasquale's on a personal best run across the top of the hill at the moment. He's just on his way out of the dipper. But he's done a 50.9 in sector one. He's sitting 10th at the moment. So there's a bit of colour starting to light up here and there. Car number 27 having a moment under brakes. And this is Alexander Rossi in the run up the hill. And it's a real temptation to get in there deeper and deeper and deeper because the amount of uh, climb gradient there is pretty significant. So gravity helps enormously with the braking distance, but only up to a point. What are you doing in the second sector? He's about four tenths overall. He'd be, a, he'd be happy with the lap, but he's about half a second away overall from McLaughlin, Di Pasquale. So Holdsworth was on a very good lap because his first sector better than anyone else's, and then we saw him a moment ago just peeling back into the lane when Marco uh, was delivering some information to us just a couple of moments ago. So uh, that's probably just to get a read for Holdsworth before he goes out and has a potentially another run. We're coming up to the five minute mark, and there he is doing exactly what we talked about. So I'd say that is, yep, let's get another set of tyres on it and see what this thing can do. So we're in a little bit of rehearsal mode here now for what's potentially a sneak preview to Armour all qualifying tomorrow afternoon. So Squally didn't finish that lap, Coppo, sorry. So he didn't, he's actually coming to the pit to put a set of tyres on, I would think. Well, some of them will be just doing a verification run with whatever the last change was, which is either undo what you've done, I don't like it, go back to what we had, or yes, a bit more of the same would be a handy thing. Yep. And then potentially whack some tyres on and then see what we've got. So we're potentially going to see pretty impressive lap time, as if we haven't already seen those today, because McLaughlin's done a 2 minute 4.2. Early in the day, the tone was set by Jamie Wincup as we pick up on car number 55, Super Chief Auto Racing Mustang, Chaz Mostert at the helm. And this is where Alex Rossi had that lock up going up the hill a few moments ago. Coming up into the cutting area on the braking approach. Tricky with the sunlight at this time of day. Cleanly in there. Second to third gear shift is a little earlier there than it might otherwise be at other portions of the racetrack. And McLaughlin, by the way, has done the fastest first sector. Talking it up, because on our numbers, he's on for a three. Wow. He's on for a three. He's done the fastest sector we've seen over the top of the hill as well, McLaughlin. So you're right. He's sitting on a 4-2. And this might be a fully unleashed lap for McLaughlin as James Courtney comes towards the line from 16th position at the moment. Personal best sectors one and two for him. He's on a 24 and he's moved it up into a mid four, five. So James Courtney, position number four, 2.45. Now we see what McLaughlin's gonna do because he bowled a wide out of that second last corner. On the run towards the left hander now to bring it up towards the line. This might be a pretty big number. He's on a 4-2, he's the fastest so far, and he rips out a two minute 3.7. Fastest ever. Big number for Scott McLaughlin. Six tenths of a second over Holdsworth. In this lap, mate, in this lap. Not bad for a Thursday. Not bad for a Thursday. <laughs> That's correct. Practice record is held by McLaughlin on a 3.8. Have a go at this replay over the top. Oh, that is. In fact, that, that was a touch. Yep. There is nothing left. That was a huge lap. That was very cool. Two minute, 3.7728. So meantime, Mostert just knocked out a two minute four flat. So that margin that I talked about being six tenths of a second has come down to just on three tenths of a second. Now keep an eye on Will Davison here on screen for the Milwaukee Racing Mustang team. He's sitting in 11th, but he's just done a better first sector than McLaughlin and his second sector is about a tenth and a half slower than McLaughlin. Slade's moved up into sixth place in the Freightliner entry in car number 14. So Will Davison's going to potentially give this a shake here as well. How deep does he get into the chase? Deep. Carries throttle a long way down the hill. 300 kilometres an hour. 
The direction change here is significant because watching the balance of the car here gives us a clue to what the lap's going to be like. Win Cup gets into the threes. He's done a two minute 3.9. The margin first to second is now 0.15 of a second as Davison gets to the line and moves up into third on a 3.9. <laughs> Three drivers in the threes. McLaughlin, Win Cup and Davison. Beautiful job, nice lap. Can you believe that? 0.2 of a second separates the top three cars. McLaughlin, Winkup, Davison, Mostert, Coulthard, Holdsworth, Rick Kelly is seventh. That is a remarkable lap from Will Davison there. In fact, I thought he was going to be able to knock them off because it was a very strong first sector. What does Holdsworth have for us? He's on a good lap. We saw signs of it when he aborted that previous lap with the fastest first sector. So Holdsworth's had great pace in the recent past. He's very close to the time that Davison did in sector one and two. And Lee Holdsworth jumps up as well, right on the fringe of a three, but not quite. He gets the fifth placing on a two minute 4.09. Rod Nash watching. It's Van Gisberger finishing off his lap. What can Shane do? He's going to come up. He comes up five spots to seventh with a 4-1-5. So he's roughly two tenths away from Wink Cup. That's a nice first day. A good effort from everybody down there at the Red Bull Holden Racing Team to be second to McLaughlin. And we saw their pace in New Zealand. There's a definite improvement with that car and the little aero tweak that's been made to the back of the ZB Commodore. Oh, that was close for Waters flag about to come out so Cam will greet that at the bottom of the hill and there is a crazy 0.15 of a second between McLaughlin and Winkup now. Holdsworth got through before the flag got out and he's done the best first sector we've seen in the session right at the last moment. He's done a 50.68. That's right on absolute record speed around here. No doubt but I think you'll find because he did it before a similar thing that on their second lap for the first sector you go better, so the tyre phasing is, is a difficult one. And then it tapers. Yeah. We'll see. What's Cam Waters got when he gets to the line in the Monster Energy Ford Mustang? Good enough for position three, another driver in the high threes. This is great. What a contest we've got. McLaughlin, Wincup, Waters and Davis in the order at the moment. Those four drivers are separated by two tenths of a second in a lap that's more than two minutes. That's a crazy tight margin. Now we ride with Lee Holdsworth through the chase. Feeds it back into second gear. Pulls up with great stability. No evidence of locking, no sliding. Out of second into third gear nicely. Down towards the final corner in the bottom low entry. Holdsworth's mid sector is a little bit adrift of what McLaughlin achieved over the top of the hill. But he was unbelievably quick in sector one. Is there movement? No, he stays in sixth place. And that was his fastest lap, a two minute 4.06. Basically did the same time lap on lap. So the tires would have tapered as Mark suggested. But very cool to watch how close this is as we go back now to Anton Di Pasquale. He's ninth in car number 99. He's tucked in behind Shane Van Gisbergen. He's done a two minute 4.4. He qualified on the second row of the grid in 2018. So 0.29, so just under three tenths of a second, separates the top six cars. Does he shift up the order from ninth? No, but that was his best lap. So held position, but improved the number. And that left Rick Kelly in tenth position. So that is everybody completed now with the laps. That means the fastest and the nod of the cap goes to this young man, Scott McLaughlin, a two minute 3.7728. That's a big number, Mark. 0.15 of a second between McLaughlin and Wincup. Then Waters, then Davison, then Mostert, Holdsworth, Coulthard, Van Gisbergen, Di Pasquale and Rick Kelly. Next group of cars headed by Tim Slade, James Courtney, Andre Heimgartner, Mark Winterbottom, James Golding, Gary Jacobson, Nick Percat, Todd Hazelwood, Richie Stanaway. And then the next group, Simona Di Silvestro, Macaulay Jones, Jack LeBrock, Alexander Rossi. So 24 cars out there, knowing that there were cars in the group today that obviously had damage as a result of some of the traumas in practices one and two. And you can feel the you can feel the energy down here in the in the pit lane. I'm just gonna grab you, he's just getting run into by our cameraman. Come over here, Will Davison. 
Oh, yeah, second of that. Mate, uh, you can feel the energy down here at the moment. It meant cars and doing 203s on Thursday afternoon. <laughs> I mean, it's insane. How does it feel? Well, it, no, it feels good. I mean, it's been a tough day. It's been a, it's been a long day. Um, you know, I know we all talked up big lap times here today, but, um, you know, I think we saw that in the first session, but we're all struggling for balance quite a bit as well. It wasn't... We weren't doing it easy. Loose is fast. Well... Yeah, I found that out then. We made some changes and it was super loose, but I could carry the speed and we improved a lot of things through Alex's session. Um, and then we made a few other changes then and probably made it a better race car, but took a little bit of peak point out of the car, which, you know, um, yeah, would have been interesting if, you know, we learn that for tomorrow. Good luck tomorrow, mate. That's fantastic. But it is fast. To answer your question. Like, it's yeah, nearly, yeah, it's nearly, uh, nearly like the GT3 car over the top. It's pretty fun. <laughs> Hey, uh, let's grab uh, Scotty McLaughlin. Uh, the, Dick Johnson shaking his hand. That's not a bad lap, eh, hey, Dick? Benny Croak, that was very good. Hey, uh, Scotty, mate, it is Thursday. Yeah. You've just done the fastest lap ever. Um, wow, and we just found out or noted you only had two green tyres on then. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, look, we just keep a lid on it, but um, the, the car feels good. We, we rolled out pretty nice. Um, Geez, mate, it's, you're hanging on over the top now. It's 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 unbelievable the, the grip of the cars, and um, I think everyone's having a full dip. So, she's good fun, um, but we'll see how we go tomorrow. Yeah, I have a crack, mate. I noticed how low your rear wing was when you went out there. Others had more wing on, so that makes the car nervous. But when it's so fast, so early in the week, Scotty, um, what do you look for now? I mean, what's left? Is there anywhere on the circuit you're, you're saying, well, it's still another two, three tenths? Oh, well, the, uh, the second last corner, I don't know if you guys saw it, but I, I dropped the wheel there. Yeah, and that was that was a moment and a half because I kept my foot into it. I'm an idiot. I've, I've got to remember it's Thursday, so um, I'll cheer myself up overnight. But there's a little bit here and there. Um, obviously, the, the, the green side side of the car actually felt all right, so the left-handers was pretty good. But the right-handers, it's still a little bit loose. So I'll tune that up overnight and... Um, throw a set of greens on it tomorrow. If it doesn't rain, we'll see, and we'll go go again. Whether it's you or someone else, mate, what does instinct tell you? Are we going to see a two here if it's dry? Uh, it's going to be a low three, I reckon. I'd be surprised if it's dry and, and the conditions are right, it'd be a low three. Um, God damn, if someone does a two, I hope I'm doing it. <laughs> Wonderful lap, mate. Great to watch. Thank you. Cheers. Cam Waters, the end of that practice session seriously felt like a qualifying session to watch. What was it like in the car? Uh, yeah, it's pretty full on, so... Um... Yeah, we kind of had a plan that we stuck to. Michael did a really good job in P2 to get the car a bit better, and, um, yeah, we just kind of fine-tuned it then, which was cool. So, um, yeah, we did a 3.9, there was a couple of tens in it, and, yeah, Scotty makes a couple of tens down the road. You seem incredibly calm and composed considering the times that you guys are putting down out there. Well, is it, does it feel like that in the car? Um, yeah, like, it's all going on. I don't know, I'm just a bit tired, so, um, yeah, the Monster Energy's over there, so I'll smash a few of them and they'll wake me up. I think you need to. Thank you. <laughs> Billy Holdsworth, quickly just grab you, mate. Uh, just all four of these Tickford run cars, was it? I think it's eight hundredths of a second separating all four cars. It's it's crazy, crazy close. But I'll just listen to you explain that there. Were you meant to do that second lap there or not? The second well, on that green side. I heard Sammy come up over the radio and say, uh, I thought it said checkered, but he told me he said go for a second. Um, so yeah, I, I sort of backed out a little bit, but then I was up, so I thought I'll push and wait for him to confirm. Um, but yeah, the, the first lap was going to be better. Uh, had a massive moment through Reed Park where the thing just understeered when I got back on the throttle. So I lost a couple of tenths there. So that's why I gained a bit back on that second lap, but the tyre quality wasn't there. So I think we're, we're on the money at the moment. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the way it's all at. Yeah, you're pretty confident with uh, tomorrow, the qualifying, but also uh, the, the consistent pace over a longer run. Yeah, where are you at with that? Yeah, well, Randall did the long run and um, he was really consistent and, and fast. So um, I suppose that's my, my job at the moment is to get the car quick for quali. Um, and his job, I mean, we want it safe for him. We want him to be comfortable because uh, you're only as good as your, your average across, across the two drivers. So um, we're getting him up to speed and he's doing a great job. So, um, yeah, we feel like we got both packages pretty well sorted. It's good to feel uh, good to feel that you're in a strong car with uh, you know a, a chance to be able to make a difference and push push it uh, to the speed that you want to push it. Absolutely, I haven't been here for probably a good nine years where I felt like I can really push the car and have confidence in it. Um, and this thing's given me more and more confidence every lap, and we keep tuning it just to make it a little bit better. So um, I'm real happy. There's no better feeling than running around here on, you know, millimetres from the wall, knowing that your car's going to hang on. Go get him. Thanks, buddy.
Shane Van Gisbergen. Don't you run away, Garth Tander. Um, Shane Van Gisbergen. P yeah, it's noisy in here, isn't it? Sorry, mate. Uh, P8 just then. Uh, where's it good? Where's it bad? What do you need to make up those two or three tents? Uh, no, it's all right for, for, for or Thursday. Um, yeah, comfortable, trying to get quicker, loosening up the car, but we made one change that was probably a good thing for Sunday, but too early in the weekend now. It was crazy to drive, but we're in, a bit, we're in an OK spot. Just the sheer pace of the track, Shane. I mean, are you yeah. concerned by saying it's going to be a different track? I mean, it's, it's hard to read what's going on here. I followed someone, and it was terrible. Like, the cars have too much downforce. You can't follow over the top. So that's going to be the hard thing. You've already got a bit of understeer, but... Following cars, you just lose all, all downforce. So, man, it's going to be a tough race, tough to pass, that's for sure. It's going to be all about track position. Uh, so, yeah, trying to save fuel and then jump people in the pits, yep. unfortunately. Good insight. Thank you, Shane. Hey, Garth, um, I managed to go up to the top of the mountain uh, and watch the session, which I haven't Sorry done. Oh, but no, it was fantastic. Yeah, well, I was hanging over the wall. I got in trouble. Um, but there was three guys. I mean, yourself, uh, Lowndes, uh, James Moffat, really stood out as really committed through McPhillamy. So, clearly, a year on, mate, you haven't forgotten how to grab it by the nuts up there and give it some. Oh, that's good to hear, mate, because it's pretty conservative up there at the moment. So... Uh, car's really stable and, and safe as far as probably setup wise at the moment across the top where it was for me and like Shane said we're actually trying to loosen the car up a little bit um, so yeah I felt really comfortable in the car and um, have done a lap or two around here mate so you sort of you, it's sort of like muscle memory it comes back uh, you know where to put the car so um, yeah I felt really comfortable really happy with my session but let me ask you at this point how much does it come back after because a lot of the chat we're having and looking at the Luke Yulden incident um, every year away it just gets a little bit harder so are you 98 percent of what you felt last year 90 80 where do you think he's right now oh it's hard to answer because i'm driving a different car so i mean this car is very very different to the car that i drove here 12 months ago so most of that session for me was just about finding how this car behaves at bathurst so um yeah i've done a lot of racing this year a lot of gt stuff a lot of other racing in other categories so uh, and every time i've jumped in this car i've only been a tenth or two away from shane so um yeah look i feel good um yeah no doubt it leaves you every time you're out of the series full-time basis but as long as you keep racing something through the year i think you'll be fine well again mate look terrific across the top well done thanks, mate thanks it is great to have garth tander back in supercars as a co-driver with shane van gisbergen this year